Greetings once again uh, to Pastor Brian, to all of our dear friends out, uh, Wish Wishick, Driscoll, Ashley, Bismarck, uh, friends and family. Um, here is our part two, uh, continuing with the small catechism, our confirmation, our Sunday school, our time. And uh, today is the sacrament of Holy Communion, uh, the Lord's Supper. And, and how this works. And once again, uh, if you do not have your uh, small little copy of the small catechism, uh, I invite you, I implore you, um, beseech you, get one and start to study it. And uh, like all things, uh, one of the best uh, little bits of advice that was ever given to me about reading the Bible, reading theology, reading all of this stuff, is to read it slowly. Um, uh, some of this, some of this material uh, needs to be read very slowly and even out loud. So you hear your voice speaking these words as it comes in. And so why 500 years uh, on from Martin to give us this information, the sacrament of Holy Communion. And we'll just begin, number one, what is Holy Communion? Holy Communion is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given with bread and wine, instituted by Christ himself for us to eat and drink. All right. Um, I, uh, when I read the Bible and when I come across uh, scripture and teachings and lessons, uh, what will always catch me is the word if. Two letters, if, if. But it, um, the way it was written 2,000 years ago from Paul and John, and I mean, it was, it was very common. And in, in many ways, you could um, replace, substitute that word in your own thinking for since or because. All right? So going into the Lord's Supper, we, we, we could say, if Jesus Christ is raised, then, therefore. But we want to make it into the declaration. Because Jesus Christ is raised from the dead, therefore. It's, it's, the, it's the whole um, foundational premise of the beginning of the Lord's Supper. Since Jesus Christ is raised from the dead, since Jesus Christ is alive and seated with the right hand on the Father in heaven. Um, see, this, is, uh, this opens up the perspective of this. Um, this also, you can imagine, okay, um, this Last Supper in the upper room with the disciples. Um, uh, I, I like this, um, this introduction. Uh, it's in John chapter 13. As they are up above, it's the preliminary work of Jesus washing the feet of the disciples. But John 13, it was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. Now to say this, okay, knowing that 
uh, the devil had done, already done this work within Judas. And here it is now Jesus who is washing the feet of Judas. This is, this is profound love, how much that Christ will love his enemies. And so what you never see or hear is this litany of, of Jesus saying to the disciples, well, um, you guys really messed this up. You guys really made a hash of this. Um, I, I got to start all over from scratch. I got to go find a whole bunch of new guys. If I'm going to build this on you, forget it. Um, this is just a complete mess. This is an absolute disaster. Uh, I, I just have never been so disappointed in the performance of a bunch of guys uh, right on and on and on. And no, this is just completely completely wrong. It is a, a matter of, of Jesus loving the betrayers. And he said, one of you will betray me. Well, Jesus was actually being pretty optimistic. You know, the whole crew, every single one of them ran away. And, uh, you know, and, and afterwards, um, there they were hiding in that room. And the, the door was locked. And there they were, piling up all the chairs and tables behind the door. Nobody was coming in. Jesus had to come through the wall, for goodness sakes. You know, um, a bunch of scaredy cats, you know, pillows over their heads, you know. Uh, so, um, so we come back to this to this line. I mean, this absolutely most beautiful, beautiful line from the twenty third Psalm. He sets a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Here, this is again. All of this is leading up to the Lord's to the Lord's Supper. So, um, and this is this is the the work and the love of Christ, growing faith in you, building faith and trust in you, uh, uh, um, desiring, seeking, wanting uh, your faith and your love, um, and not not what he gets. Uh, but um, so here, here we have this, um, and it asks this this beautiful question. Essentially, where do the scriptures say this? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Paul. Okay, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Paul. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now, now we move into the second point, um, because it, it, this now opens this up. You see, uh, it is the same thinking that we have to shift same thing in regards to baptism. This is not about you. It's not about Brian. This is not about, this is not about anything that I do. Because Christ has commanded this, implored this, impelled this uh, for us to happen. That this is not about me. And uh, when Jesus said, this is, present tense, is is present tense right now. This is my body. This is my blood. Okay. So the question uh, with number two, what benefits do we receive from the sacrament? What benefit do we receive? See, this uh, when we talk about benefits, this can even open up into uh, legalism uh, in that there would be an if-then. If this is true, then, then is this true? Um, okay, so uh, what benefits do we receive from this sacrament? The benefits of this sacrament are pointed out by the words given and shed for you for the remission of sins. These words assure us that in the sacrament we receive forgiveness of sin, of life and of salvation. For where there is forgiveness of sin, there is also life and salvation. And so this 
Th this is also true in the waters of our baptism. The water poured upon you as Jesus calls you to respond, to answer. Okay, number three. How can eating and drinking do all this? All right, I mean, it's a, it, it is a straightforward, honest, human question. And the, the, the answer is, is, is found not in us, or you don't find the answer in us, Luther said. It is not eating and drinking that does this. It is rather the words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. The remission of sin, big word. The forgiveness of sin, given and shed for you. What you have done, who you were. You are not that person anymore. You are in this becoming process. These words, along with eating and drinking, are the main thing. And whoever believes this has exactly what the words say. The bread and the wine, the body and the blood, bring to you the forgiveness of your sin, the forgiveness of your fallenness, the forgiveness of your life in the old Adam, the forgiveness of this. Okay? This is how this happens, and it's not by anything that you do. I want to but say perhaps in the, in the opening up of your heart in humility with a humble spirit to accept our failure, to accept our, our, uh, the, the truth of who we are. Okay, well, here we are. So, number four, number four. And to, to complete this, when is a person rightly prepared to receive the sacrament? And it is a sacrament uh, because Christ has ordered it and ordained it. Uh, it is not a memorial. It's not an ordinance as others of our uh, Christian brothers and sisters in other rooms of the mansion will hold on to. But we hold on to this as sacrament. Fasting and other outward preparations serve a good purpose. However, that person is well prepared and worthy who believes the words. What words? What words are we supposed to believe? given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. But anyone who does not believe these words or doubts them is not prepared nor even worthy for the words for you require simply a believing heart. And so the sacrament of Holy Communion um, we could we could spend so much time on this. It's such a lovely thing. Uh, you know how tempting it was to bring in the Augsburg Confession in Article 4, uh, but we didn't go there. <laughs> so grace and peace and love and be safe, one and all. Be safe in these very trying, trying times of June 2020. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.